morning and welcome to Christ Church on this first Sunday after the Epiphany, the feast of the baptism of our Lord. Let us prepare our hearts for worship by listening to Director of Music Ed Mackey Schramm improvise on the organ. And then let us sing together our opening hymn, O Love, How Deep, How Broad, How High.
Blessed be the one holy and living God. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Holy God, creator of light and herald of goodness, at the waters of baptism, you proclaim Jesus, your beloved Son. With the baptized of every time, and generation, may we say yes to your call to repentance and be led to the life of abundance we experience in your love. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. The Word of the Lord.
reading from Acts. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, Into what then were you baptized? They answered, Into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about twelve of them. The Word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with the water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee, and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Thank you, Karen, for proclaiming the gospel today. It is wonderful to see you all the way from Boston and a belated happy 90th birthday to your amazing mother, Dorothy. In the gospel that we have just heard, as Jesus is being baptized by John and is coming up from the waters, the sky, and let's imagine that leaden gray winter sky with which we Michiganders are so familiar, opens. The impenetrable steel clouds part, the radiance beams to his holy face, the spirit warms him, and the voice speaks to him, the word made flesh, you are my son. You are of love, and I love you. When we let ourselves imagine it, this scene is shocking, isn't it? And unprecedented. The heavens torn apart. The sun actually comes out. And yet the underlying or overarching reality that God is love and Jesus is love incarnate is so true and has always been the firm foundation that we need not be surprised. We witness in this inflection point the love of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit the love of God for all creation, the love of God so deep, so broad, so high for you and for me, for those we know and those we don't know, 
for those we agree with and we don't agree with, for those who have come before and those who are yet unborn. This love, this is the truth. This is the foundation of our lives. As one commentator points out, the heavens will open again in Mark. There will again be talk of tearing and Elijah and the love of the Father and the Son. It happens at the highest inflection point of Mark's story, the transfiguration on the mount. And it happens again near the end, at the cross, when even the imperial powers get caught up in declarations of divine love. When Jesus cannot breathe and with a loud cry breathes his last, the curtain of the temple is torn in two and the official guard who had been standing in front of Jesus says, surely this man was the son of God. And surely he was. We witness this at his baptism when the barrier between earth and heaven is so effaced, there is only love being born and born anew. Only love, the way of challenge, of hope, grace, and abundant, eternal life. Yet, on the days that come after, the ordinary time in between the opening of heaven and the tearing of the temple, the disciples stumble, stumble along, famously forgetting what they have seen and heard. On those ordinary days, indistinguishable, one from the next, like a year, years of blurs days, the heavens seem not torn open, but sealed, silent. Today, under these unabating leaden skies, persistent, isolation and terrible news, do we remember what we have seen and heard in Jesus Christ? Do we have faith even in what we have not yet seen, in what these days we might barely imagine? Justice? Joy? Do we feel our dreams of safety, of wholeness, and yes, even love, Deferred, if not crushed, coolly, by such virulent white supremacy as we witnessed on full repugnant display this past Wednesday in Washington, D.C. In the wake of the riots at the U.S. Capitol this past Wednesday, where do we go. Where do we go from here? Wrote Martin Luther King Jr. in his last book, Chaos or Community. And for more on this, I direct you to presiding Bishop Michael Curry's homily for this weekend. Before I get too far along the way, let me be clear that when I use the word, the phrase white supremacy, I definitely am not saying that all white people are white supremacists or racists. I realize that the words supremacy and racism may be heard as charged words. They are charged because of the violence, physical, emotional, and spiritual that occurs when one group of people Generally, in these United States, those of us whose skin is white or who identify as white, assume, wittingly or not, consciously or not, that we are dominant. That when we walk into a room, we will be heard. That when we speak, 
we will be believed. When we strive, we will achieve. When we work, we will earn wealth. When we shop, we will shop. When we drive, we will not be stopped. When we fail, we'll suffer consequences merely proportional to the mistake itself. This is the system of white supremacy into which we have been born and in which we find ourselves in the United States of America. This is the foundation upon which our beloved country is built. From the stealing of the land in the first place from the indigenous peoples, to the, uh, to the erection of wealth at the expense of black bodies. And because we, because I, have been born into it and am conditioned to it daily, like those adages of the fish being thirsty and not even realizing it's in the water or the sun being behind the clouds and still shining. I have had to and will always need to learn to see and practice seeing my privilege. The protections and passes that I inherit for having been born into white skin, into this system that prioritizes such visages yet endangers those whose complexions are darker. Sometimes, to me, white privilege is as imperceptible as a virus cell. Sometimes, like this past Wednesday, it is on full, repugnant, menacing display. This past Wednesday afternoon, the doors and windows of our capital a sacred space not for religion or ideology, but for democracy were bashed, torn open. Hundreds of people with skin the shade of mine tore open and violated the Capitol and our very democratic process. Carrying banners, holding signs, wearing shirts, chillingly in support of slavery and Nazism, destroying furniture, debasing the property, employing violence and walking away. Yes, there are arrests now being made, but we know that if those rioters had had darker complexions, I cannot even finish the thought. This ghastly display of white privilege and supremacy was shocking and unprecedented in that holy space during a constitutional process, shocking and unprecedented, yet not surprising, for it showed, among other things, what we already know to be true. That the laws of this country are made and enforced to uphold whiteness at devastating and dangerous costs. Do we remember, even today, even in the midst of horror and sorrow and fatigue and grief to set our feet on the way of love, on the way of love? For as the spiritual goes, which we'll hear Calabria sing, in just a few minutes, even as images of the bashing of the doors take hold of our imaginations, somebody's knocking at your door. Somebody's knocking at your door. Do you hear him? Sounds like Jesus. Jesus is calling you and is calling me to the way of love. For the love of God for us and the love of the Father and the whole Son and the Holy Spirit, the undivided Trinity, is the ultimate truth, our foundation. The love that Jesus shows us is a long road. It is not easy. It is not one and done. It is full, yet never complete. 
I hold close the maxim that I have discussed before that love is curiosity plus time. Yes, and love is listening plus time. Love is humility plus time. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. Love does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It does not hold on to wrongs. Love does not rationalize or ignore or conspire. Love does not grasp for power. It does not hoard privilege. It does not trample life. It does not fear. Love respects and upholds the precious dignity of every human being. Love reckons, love repents. And if in our heart of hearts, we confess that we feel afraid of our differences, we feel awkward and unsure because we don't know what to say or not to say. So we'd rather just look away. That is when we train our eyes to look and look again. The author Beth Sarah Wright says that to respect is to look and to look again. She breaks down the word itself, spect, meaning look as in spectacle, and re, meaning again. Thus, to respect another is to look and look again and to keep looking and to know that love is there, whether we can feel it or not. Love embraces, yet is not comfortable. Love challenges, it chisels, it carves room for all to be safe and to flourish. Love does not delight in evil, it detests evil, but it rejoices in the truth. And the truth is that in many ways, America has been born in white supremacy, a brutal insistence upon the superiority of whiteness above all. Why rejoice in that? Because love never ends. Love always hopes. Love always perseveres. In love, there is no such thing as white comfort at the expense of black life. In love, there is no white violence against black bodies. In love, there is no white privilege nor white supremacy, for no one is superior over and against another. There is no slave nor master, no black nor white, nor rich, no poor, no Democrat nor Republican, no American, African, Russian, Canadian, Bolivian, but all are one in Christ who saves us and sets us free, one and all, to love. Somebody's knocking at your door. Do you hear him?
in Christ, God draws us to water welling up for abundant eternal life. I call upon you, therefore, to renew the solemn promises and vows of holy baptism. Do you believe in God, the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? I will, with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil? And whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord. I will, with God's help. Will you proclaim, by word and example, the good news of God in Christ? I will, with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people? and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, with God's help. I invite you to touch yourselves with water, cross yourselves as a symbol of your renewal and remembrance of baptism. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, keep us in eternal life by his grace. In Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Jesus calls us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, baptizing us with the spirit and with fire, Strengthen us to grow in hope. Lord of truth, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, eternal word, hear us as we pray for those who proclaim your word, especially Bonnie, our bishop, Emily, Anthony, and David, our priests, Chip, our deacon, and all who teach, preach, challenge, and encourage. Lord of truth, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, bringing forgiveness to all who repent, teach your church dependence on your grace. Lord of truth, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, King of kings and Lord of lords, hear us as we pray for our world and our country, especially for Donald, our president, Joe, our president-elect, Gretchen, our governor, Michael, our mayor, and all who hold authority. Lord of truth, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, fulfillment of the promises of old, give hope to all who suffer and wait for healing. We pray for Marie, Pat, Sue, Janae, Lucy, Ed, 
Tim, David, Diggory, Kate, Debbie, Vincent, Grace, Hope, Judith, Lauren, Lucinda, Joanne, Matthew, Arnold, Jane, Jonathan, Paul, Kathleen, Marilyn, Kay, Owen, Greg, Len, John, Bobby, Sue, Mimi, Megan, Bob, and those we now name. Lord of truth, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, in whose light we see light, welcome into light perpetual those we love but see no longer. We pray for all who have died, especially those we now name. Lord of truth, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, beloved Son of the Father, anoint us and shower us with gifts of your Holy Spirit. We pray especially for those celebrating birthdays this week. Margie, George, Mira, Megan, and those we now name. Lord of truth, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, in and through you, the creator makes all things new. Transform our nature by the riches of your grace. And in the renewal of our lives, make known your heavenly glory. In your holy name we pray, amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the holy spirit keep you in eternal life amen god has made us one in christ he has set his seal upon us and as a pledge of what is to come has given the Spirit to dwell in our hearts. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please share with one another signs of God's peace. Good morning. My name is Lisa Jones and I am your vestry representative for today. Happy Sunday and Happy New Year. I have just a couple of announcements for us today. The first is a reminder of our annual meeting that will take place on Sunday, January 31st. It's an opportunity to be updated on the business of the church. So if you can attend, please do. My second announcement is regarding the Christ Church Cookbook. 
there is still time to submit your recipes, the deadline is January 15th. And lastly, it is so much easier to love than to hate. Please choose love. Blessings to you all. Have a great week and continue to be safe. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa, for the update and for all of the messages that you have delivered and the wisdom that you have shared throughout this extraordinary and extraordinarily challenging year. At the annual meeting in just a few weeks, you will be concluding your term as senior warden, and we are really, really grateful for your strong presence and clear leadership among us. To all, look out for information these next couple of weeks for opportunities to observe Lent together. Lent begins in the middle of February. I am particularly excited that Deep River, an exploration of African-American spirituals in our lives, will return for its third season virtually, so stay tuned. And let us choose love and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing. Always and everywhere to give thanks to you, God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation and the calling of Israel to be your people in your word spoken through the prophets and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the savior and redeemer of the world. In him, you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. As the grain once scattered in the fields, and the grapes once dispersed on the hillside, are now reunited on this table in bread and wine, so, Lord, may your whole church soon be gathered together from the corners of the earth into your kingdom. Amen. Faithful God, in the wonder of your wisdom and love, you fed your people in the wilderness with the bread of angels, and you sent Jesus to be the bread of life. Although we cannot gather in person as a congregation and consume these gifts of bread and wine together, we thank you that we do receive the sacrament of Christ's presence the forgiveness of sins, and all other benefits of Christ's passion. By the power of the Holy Spirit, may we embody your desire and be renewed for your service. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Lord Jesus, stay with us. Assure us with and revive us in the truth that in you alone we are and always will be one body. Nourish us with solace and strength to be bread for the world. Bring us at last to that heavenly banquet where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May God the Father, who led the wise men by the shining of the star to find the Christ, the light from light, lead you also in your pilgrimage to find the Lord. Amen. May God the Son, who turned water into wine at the wedding feast at Cana, transform your life and make your heart glad. Amen. May God, the Holy Spirit, who came upon the beloved Son at his baptism in the River Jordan, pour out his gifts on you who have come to the waters of new birth. Amen. And may the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.